All right, how you guys doing today? This is Mr. Mothgorella coming at you. Today, we're going to learn about Pythagorean Theorem. That's my buddy Pythagoras hanging out. At least one representation of him. Isn't he pretty cool looking? This man is amazing. He did a lot of really cool things and changed mathematics for the Western world, or what at his time was considered the Western world. So if you want to find out some cool stuff about him, just Google him on and you'll find out a ton of really cool stuff. But we are going to take a look at examples one through four in this video. Check it out. Now, the Pythagorean theorem, most people have heard of this before, and it is it says this, in a right triangle square, the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the legs. Now, if you ever take a look at the Wizard of Oz, the there's a clip where the scarecrow screws this up. So Google that, take, it a, take a look at it on YouTube, and you'll get a good laugh out of it. Now, I know most of you guys can probably know how to draw a right triangle. Most of people will draw it like this. And they'll put a little box right here in the corner. And then you'll have a couple of sides. And usually A and B denote these two sides. And then there's this side C over here. Now usually C is reserved for a very, very special part. And that part is called the hypotenuse. Now the other two sides, A and B, both of those our legs. So this is a leg over here and then so is this piece. So both of those sides are legs and then the side that's across from the right angle from the 90 degree angle that is always called your hypotenuse. So that's all you gotta know. You gotta be able to identify the parts and you're gonna have to be able to apply the theorem. Now there's a couple different ways you can write it. Uh, most commonly people will see this theorem written as C or A squared plus b squared equals c squared. But the way I want to show you guys, because this is going to help us a little bit later on, I want you to flip that around and say c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So we're going to use that formula to solve problems involving the Pythagorean theorem. You could use either one, doesn't really matter, but for the sake of this video, I'm using the second one. So here we go. All right, so here in example one, two, three, and four, we've got to figure out what the unknown side is, and we've got to identify it as a leg or hypotenuse. So this piece right here, x, that is going to be across from the right angle from the 90 degrees, so that's going to be right there. So that tells us that is going to be the hypotenuse. So the best way I remember how to spell hypotenuse, hypo, H-Y-P-O, the number 10, T-E-N and then use USE, hypotenuse. So make sure you learn how to spell that word because it's one that we'll be using quite a bit. Now the Pythagorean theorem, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So where X is, that's gonna be in the place of C. So I'm gonna have X squared equals, and then A squared plus B squared, the eight and the six, it doesn't really matter which one you call A and which one you call B, as long as you make sure that you get both of them in there. So 6 squared is grand total of 36. 8 squared is 1, or I'm sorry, 64. I'm thinking ahead here. So I get x squared equals 36 plus 64. And this is how I want you guys to show your work, just like this. So x squared equals, if you add those up, you get 100. And then in Algebra 2, you'll deal with this a lot. When you go to solve this type of problem, Usually you will do plus and minus the square root, but since we are dealing with distance and geometry, you're just going to take the square root of 100. Now the square root of 100 is just 10. So our hypotenuse in number one has a length of 10. All right, so that's how I want you to do all these kinds of problems. I think you could probably do these ones on your own because they're pretty straightforward. So if you can, hit pause, do all of them, and then come back and see if you got them right. All right, but if you want to go through it together, here we go with example number two. Well, this x over here is not across from the right angle, so this is going to be a leg. So I'm going to try to find the length of a leg. So anytime you're trying to find the length of a leg, procedurally, it'll be the same thing. So we have c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c squared, that is my hypotenuse, which has a length of 5. So 5 squared is going to be equal to x squared plus... 3 squared. Now 5 squared is 25, no big deal. x squared, we're trying to figure that out. And then plus 3 squared is 9. If I subtract 9 on both sides, I get 16 for x squared. 
Now again, I want to take the positive square root of 16. I don't have to worry about the negative one because I'm dealing with distance and that's going to give me the value of x and the square root of 16 of course is 4. Bam! Pretty straightforward stuff. Moving on to number 3. 3 is going to be just like 1 except that one is flipped around so again let me just change colors here mix it up a little bit this is going to be our, and I'm going to abbreviate hypotenuse, HYP. So there's our hypotenuse. So again, we're going to have x squared equals 4 squared plus 6 squared, doesn't matter how you write it. You could do 6 squared plus 4 squared, because either way, when we go through this, 4 squared is 16, 6 squared is 36. Add those two numbers up, 16 and 36, gives you a total of 52. So the x will be the positive square root of 52. Now, square root of 52, we're going to have to do a little bit of stuff with that because we're going to have to simplify that. And this is one of the skills that's going to be really predominant here in this section. You're going to have to make sure that you simplify that all the way down as, as far as you can. So square root of 52 is the same thing as the square root of 4, which is a perfect square, times 13. And one of the ways that um, I kind of get people to remember which one's which, you could say, all right, 52, I could have 1 times 52. So these are going to be the factors. I could have 2 times 26. I could have, let's see, 3 goes does not go into it, because if I add up 5 and 2, I get 7. But I know 4 goes into it 13 times. So what I want to do is choose these two factors right here, because 4 is a perfect square. So when I square root 4, that just gives me 2. Square root of 13, I can't do anything with that junk, so I just leave that as square root 13. Bam! Shazam! We're done with that junk. Poof! Now, on a number 4, for this piece over here, oh, 4, we're trying to find a hypotenuse again, so make sure we label that HYP, because that's a hypotenuse, and we'll be solving that same thing as we did everything else. X squared is going to be 9 squared plus 12 squared. And again, you could have written that as 12 squared plus 9 squared. So we get x squared equals 9 squared is 81, 12 squared is 144. Now, it might take you a little bit to add that up, but when you do, 81 plus 144 gives you 225. So x is going to be the square root of 225. Now, when you simplify that, that's going to be really, really nice because the square root of 225, the positive one, is 15. So that's all you have to do for this. The main thing you got to do is make sure that you identify each piece and substitute all your values correctly into the formula. Sometimes, like in example number three, you might have to simplify it a little bit. That's all right. You can handle that. All right. So that's it for examples one through four. Peace. I'm out. Come back for examples five and six. They'll be in the next video.